Well, the imputed righteousness of Christ uh, is the, the simple glory of the gospel that God counts to us the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that means two things. One is uh, not only that our sins are forgiven, but also that the holiness of Jesus Christ is counted to us. So the gospel doesn't just bring us back to the Garden of Eden and then say, right, you get opportunity number two to do better than Adam. In, in imputing to us the righteousness of Christ, there is both the pardon of our past sins and this principle that we are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that means, I think, when we, when we begin to grasp it and, and it begins to filter into our instincts, that we become conscious that in the sight of God we are actually as righteous as Jesus Christ, that we have the same title to stand before the Father as he did, for example, when he prayed in John 17 or when he ascended to the right hand of the Father. Uh, we, we, have, we are as righteous as Jesus Christ because the only righteousness we have is Jesus Christ's righteousness. And that, I think, is part of the indicative grounding of the imperative, because in fellowship with God, you are as righteous as he is righteous. Be righteous as he is righteous. And that really, I think, is in a way the pattern of sanctification in the whole Bible. I will be your God, therefore you will be my people. I am holy, therefore you be holy. I count you as righteous in my sight, in Jesus Christ. Therefore, be righteous in my sight. And that then, I think, frees us up in a way, or stimulates, stimulates me to go back to the Gospels and to find out what the Lord Jesus was really like in order that those patterns may become real models for me and I can understand this is what the Holy Spirit wants to work into my life.